guys, it's your guy in the chair here, and look, that title unfortunately is not clickbait. I wish I was saying I would I wish I could say I was fooling you, but I've never seen Breaking Bad until up to yesterday. I literally finished the series last night and I was absolutely amazed, astounded. Any synonym or word that you can come up with that relates to legendary or absolutely amazed or brilliant or any any of those words, that that's how I felt after the after the after the credits rolled to that last episode, and now I am sitting here ready to talk about it with you guys. Look, I know that I'm probably one of the only people in the world who've never seen Breaking Bad, so I know I'm probably alone in that group, but if you've never seen it, I highly, highly recommend that you go uh, watch this show as soon as possible, because honestly, even after all the word of mouth, after all the praise that I've seen this show got, get, after everything that you know I've seen about uh, I've seen from this show on Twitter about the memes, blah, blah, blah. Even what brought me to watch this show in the first place is the fact that everywhere Brian Cranston and Aaron Paul go, they're always shown on television, not only together, but just to, they're, they're the guys from Breaking Bad. Any sporting event I'm watching, they're always on television. And they're there. They always show them. Everybody always has to bring them up about Breaking Bad. So I finally just had to say, F it. Watch this show. And honestly, guys... Even after all the good things I've heard about this show, it was still somehow undersold to me. Literally, the only way you can truly understand the impact that Breaking Bad had on television, the only way you can understand the impact that Jesse Pinkman and Walter White have on TV characters themselves, the only way you can understand truly what Breaking Bad did for television is by watching it. You're like like hearing it from somebody else isn't going to do you any justice. You really got to watch this show for yourself. You got to experience this show for yourself because it really is something to behold. It is absolutely astounding in so many different ways. I mean, not only the writing, the directing, the performances themselves are absolutely out of this world. I mean, I can understand why this show won so many Emmys. I'm going to be real with you though. These performances were damn near Oscar worthy and I understand that Oscars are for the movies, so that's, that's why they can't win. But I promise you, you could have put Je you could have put Aaron Paul and Brian Cranston's performance up with some of the best uh, actors and actresses that got nominated for best perform best actor best uh, best actor best supporting actor in whatever years that Breaking Bad came out. I promise you, we can find some people and we can say that Brian Cranston and Aaron Paul could have went neck and neck, uh, or could have went head to head head to head with them because. Dude, these two were absolutely ridiculous. I mean, I knew Brian, and it's crazy because, and before I even get into, you know, I'm, I'm going to talk about, you know, Breaking Bad and stuff like that, but I kind of just want to talk about what brought me to this show in the first place. And honestly, I want to talk about right now why it took me so long to even get there. Look, Brian Cranston for me for a very long time was always Malcolm's dad, Malcolm in the middle, like the goofy, funny guy and all of a sudden I'm hearing that this dude is a top tier drug dealer and he's one of the most menacing characters on television. I'm like, y'all talking about Frankie Muniz's dad from Malcolm in the Middle, Brian Cranston? Like that's the guy everybody keeps praising. So like for a long time, that was just stuck in my head and I'm like, bro, there's no way this dude is who y'all keep saying he is, blah blah blah. And just that just kept preventing me from watching the show. That and the show came on AMC, I think. I was never a fan of The Walking Dead, so I never watched, so I, AMC never came on my television, and on top of that, like I, said, I didn't watch Breaking Bad, so, and honestly, I'm gonna be real, AMC is kind of an old people network, <laughs> uh, no offense to anybody that watches AMC, but like, I'm just not tuning into AMC that much, but Breaking Bad is truly a show that you need to t tune into, look, the way this is gonna go, this is a full spoiler warning, by the way, I'm just gonna say this now, if you've never seen Breaking Bad, which I can't trash you for, because I've literally just joined the club yesterday. Um, if you've never seen it, I highly recommend that you go watch it because I'm going to spoil everything from here on out about this show now. I mean, maybe not every single plot detail or every single you know thing that happened, but I am going to talk about a majority of things, especially a lot of the character relations and the characters themselves and the plots and just where this entire story took me and where we went and... Yeah, so this is just a full-on spoiler warning. So if you have not seen this, I highly recommend you do. But like I said, I feel like I'm alone in the in the universe of Breaking Bad or not being not being someone who saw Breaking Bad until recently. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let's just get into this review. All right, so the way I'm going to do this is I'm just going to be talking about my experience with this show from beginning to end. And I'm going to start with Walter White, the man who was introduced to us from the very beginning as not who he was by the end of this show. He was presented to us as a weak, dud, pansy-ass type character who was somebody who just let people walk all over him. He was somebody who regretted a lot of decisions in his life. He had earlier in his life had to deal with 
um, a company, well, like two of his partners who he built this company with absolutely backstabbing him and just taking it everything or, or building the company beyond what he had had and you know they stole all his ideas and stuff like that so Walter and Walter's a chemistry teacher like he was somebody who could have been a part of a big technology corporation and been a really rich man but is a run is a high school chemistry teacher not making that much his life is pretty boring he he thinks and honestly it, it's presented that way that it is a pretty boring life a very suburban a suburban dad normal white dad life like nothing too crazy and it's great and i even enjoyed it a lot more than i expected to because one a lot of people told me that breaking bad starts slow i was hooked on this thing immediately because i loved what they did with walt character and the way they presented us with walt they like everybody was presenting to the fact that Walt's life is boring. Like, even Hank, the entire time they're watching Hank in the first episode uh, talk about the drug raid, and he's telling Walt, yeah, come on, let's go to a drug raid. Like, we'll show you around, show you some stuff, exciting your life up a little bit. Like, everybody knows that Walt is just a boring fuck. So, like, it's like nobody would expect this man to turn into what he did by the end. And so by that, I'm already hooked. I'm already on board because I know that the character development in this show is going to go through the roof. On top of that... I can understand why people love Jesse Pinkman. The way this dude was introduced, literally falling out of a house after having sex with a hot uh, blonde, like, yo, know, like that's all I needed. All I needed was that. Dean Norris is Hank, literally one of the most energetic and I'd say, um, it's not, not, I'm not looking for the word attractive, but it's, it's like an attraction. Like, I don't know what it is about Dean Norris as Hank Schrader, but... This dude just has this sort of energy where you're always just trying to pay attention to what he's doing. Like, he's always making you laugh. Like, he's just always on it. Like, I don't know. Like, it's just like Hank was one of those characters where I always enjoyed watching him on screen. And I could never take my eyes off him for a second because Hank was always somebody who was just up to no... Not, not up to no good, but, I mean, in the sense of, like, Walt's world, he was up to no good because he was a cop. But... I mean, look, from even then, like, we start with the Walter approaching Jesse, and then from that we enter them, you know, trying to be cooks and, and open up this whole world of meth, and then you have them running into Tuco, and, dude, Tuco was an absolute crazy guy, him and his, uh, <laughs> Hector Salamanca, oh my god, I'm gonna talk about Hector and Gus in a, in a minute, it'll be a little further down the road, but I'm gonna talk about them in a little bit, but... Look, Tuco and uh, Hector, dude, that was crazy because honestly, season one for me was sort of like, and, and one thing I do really enjoy about this show is that it has, it takes all of this on from, it takes this story on from a very realistic perspective. Like if this were to actually happen in real life, like how would this go? Like if this were to actually be a, like this is the realest take in my opinion, other than Snowfall, on how the drug game can go and how, you know, your life can completely turn in just an instant. Now, the one thing I will say I was kind of thrown off about was only the fact that this entire series takes place in the span of like a year and maybe a half at that. No, actually, maybe like two years because Walt turns 51. There's an episode called 51. And then by the end of that, end of the season, he's 52. So it takes place over the course of like two years but mainly by the time walt turns 51 like dude like all like a whole chunk of shit has happened in a year which of course yes a lot can happen in a year but that much i don't know that was kind of pushing it but i mean either way i still enjoyed the heck out of season one season two is when we got more into like the saul goodman character and stuff like that and then and like i said this is this is really where the show impressed me with how not only like intriguing each character they introduced was but just how like invested you get into the story how how invested you get into not really walter getting caught but it's more so like from the very beginning walter is presenting this as doing this for doing this for his family and i'm all i'm all on board like i said i was presented i'm presented with a character who feels like in his entire life he's just been walked over and he's never done nothing to truly like 
he's literally presented with the information that he's going to die. Once he's in introduced with that information, he looks back upon his life and sees that he has nothing to leave his children, his wife. They're just going to be in debt. They're, like Walter, his life is basically amounted to nothing to, from all this. Like it, it's going to be for nothing. And he's finally given that. Well, um, I'm, I don't know how to put this, but he's finally, you know, presented with the information, like I said, that he's going to die. And he decides to take it upon himself to take his life into his own hands. And I, I'm going to kind of skip around because there's something that I do want to talk about. There was a, it, it, this didn't happen in, this might've happened in season two or three, but there's a scene where Walter goes to take his chemo and there's another guy doing his chemo at the same time. And he's talking to Walter about how scared he is and how afraid he is and blah, blah, blah. And Walter is telling him like, dude, the day that they presented me with this information or the day that they told me that this like is how it's going to go and I could possibly die and stuff like that, I took my life by storm. I took my life back. It's me that makes the decisions. I control when I go. I, I say when I'm what I'm going to do with myself. Blah, blah, blah. I, I love where, honestly, cancer took Walt. I love where cancer took Walt's development. And honestly, it sucks to the fact that you know, something as tragic as cancer had to happen for, you know, Walt to make those alt life altering, changing decisions. But I mean, that's ha that, that happens in life sometimes. Sometimes we really allow life to just pass us by until we're presented with some tragic news that we really either need to realize like, yo, like we need to live for something because we damn sure ain't trying to die for nothing. And honestly, I, I can't blame Walter for that at all. But like I said, for a majority of the, ser of the series, Walter was claiming to do this for his family. And honestly, like I said, I was on board with it. He is a man who who was going to die soon anyway he wanted to leave his family a fortune so he could pay for his kids college tuition and their lives and so his family just isn't in debt i can't be mad at that so from then on so from that point i was all on walter and jesse's team i absolutely adore the walter and jesse pinkman dynamic i'll say this it's it's hard for me to determine now i will say this i do know that walter definitely has a soft spot for jesse and he definitely cares they have a very fucked up father-son dynamic it, it's it's horrible and the but i'll say this it's, it, it's it's kind of hard to truly say that walter cares because in just some instances it's just like walter was really doing stuff out of selfishness and just you know trying to manipulate jesse and things like that and at the same time, though, it's like Walter did a lot of th things right by Jesse. He also did a lot of things wrong by Jesse. Jesse was kind of always just a pawn to Walt, and I could see that. But at the same time, there was just so many other character moments that happened in the series where I'm like, no, nah, you really do care about this kid. It's just like you just get in your own way sometimes and just be a complete dickhead. And honestly, like... What what I really loved about their dynamic and when it really took off was when Mike got involved. When Mike and Jesse, you know, started to have their relationship. Mike also, um, Jonathan Banks, that's who plays Mike. Mike is one of the best characters in this show. He is absolutely a real one. When I tell y'all my heart was literally ripped out of my chest when Walt killed this dude, bro. Like, I was so messed up because I'm just like, dude... Mike is a guy that Walter knew he could just never fuck with. Like, it, and this is a real old dude. And honestly, just what, like that dead stare that he'll, that he'll give you, bro, that just tells you, like, you do not want to try anything with me. That, like, I can't, like, Mike was really a real one, bro. I loved Mike's character, man. And I was so hurt when he died. But when Mike and Jesse's relationship really started to kick off in the series, I really enjoyed their dynamic because it kind of, was a grandfather grandson relationship between Mike and Jesse. Mike saw the same potential. Honestly, my I feel like Walter, Mike, and Gus all saw immense potential in Jesse. They just, you know, went about it different ways. Walter went about it in a way to just manipulate. Mike didn't want anything but this kid to just get out of the business and save himself. Gus Honestly, he really wanted to kill Walt more than Jesse, if we're being honest. Jesse was just somebody who he couldn't really touch because, you know, he needed Walter and blah, blah, blah. But Gus saw immense potential as well and gave Jesse things to do. And look, Gus even wanted Jesse to take over the business at one point. So, no, they all saw crazy potential in Jesse. And honestly, Aaron, Paul, I'm going to be like I said, this is going to be a big rant. And I'm just going to be going all over the place. But um. All right, so I hope you guys can follow me, and I do apologize, but I, like I said, I just love this show, and I just want to get this all off my chest. Aaron Paul. 
I now understand why people were so pissed at Need for Speed when that movie came out because I did not think this dude had the acting chops that he has in this show. Now, TV and movie acting are two completely different things, and clearly, you can tell it is because Aaron Paul is night and day in, night, in Need for Speed and, and Breaking Bad here. But Aaron Paul as Jesse Pinkman truly truly had so many heartbreaking moments in this show and honestly moments that reminded me of myself at times as far as addiction goes and just you know relying on drugs and things like that and escaping from the world and how shitty it can be and honestly like I said this show really had a, a this show really had a realistic um scope on just how this entire drug world works and they even and I love what they did with Jesse's character because even as him and Walt started to make money no matter how much Jesse was making he still wasn't happy he was throwing parties with homeless people in his in his house giving people stacks of money for pizzas I want people to be partying by the time I get back here like dude like this dude was up this dude had hundreds of thousands damn near millions of dollars and he was still depressed out of his mind like it doesn't matter how much money you make that that is not going to bring you happiness it can still destroy you in so many ways like i love this show this show's writing is peak that like truly i'm gonna be so real with y'all i don't think i've seen a show better than this one in my life like yeah everybody's gonna have a big everybody has their that one show that they are so hooked to everybody has that one show that they're gonna you know die on a mountain for this might be the one for me man like truly and honestly the more I think about it, it's like the one show and the one show I will say, or well, there are a few shows, but Peaky Blinders is definitely like the more I think about that show, it just climbs up my rankings and it's really getting close to like being one of the best of the best. It actually is the be one of the best of the best, but it's not better than this. But look, I, I just, I'm just saying all that to say like this television show has really just surpassed all my expectations. Like I said, the all the good things I heard, all the word of mouth, it it did not it didn't, you know, it it, it didn't compare. It it truly did not compare to what this show actually brings you. And I'm telling you, man, when I'm talking about non-stop thrilling performances back to back to back, like everybody got it. Everyone in this show is acting their ass off, man. And before I even get to the guy that everybody, the villain that everybody praises in this show, Gus Fring, I'm going to talk about a woman that everybody hates, including me, Skylar White. But look, before I get to Skylar White's character, I want to separate the actress and the character for a second because Anna Gunn, while she portrayed one of the most annoying housewives, well, uh, she's a housewife, yeah, well, yeah, she was a housewife. Uh, she tried to run a car wash and work with Ted and all that stuff, but no, she's a housewife. Um, for Anna Gunn to truly portray one of the most annoying housewives and just truly be someone that she... I'm, I know at some point in time during the shooting of this show, like, she was either getting a shit ton of hate mail or people were just looking at her on the street and just going, yo, like, why? Like, why are you still alive in this show? Like, can you just... Can you die? Like, you you keep saying you waiting on Walt to die. Can you die? That, like, Anna Gunn, you absolutely killed your role. And I have to give you all the praise in the world before I trash Skylar White. Because Skylar... <laughs> Oh, Skylar, you bitch. I could not stand your character. But Anna Gunn, you absolutely killed it. And now on to Skylar White. Skylar White is easily one of the worst wives in TV history. Easily. Like, I, I, it probably don't get worse than that. I'm telling you. I'm, that, and honestly, I had to give Anna Gunn her praise because never in my life has every time a character spoken, anytime the camera just pans to anytime the camera just pans to the character, anytime Skylar just makes some sort of face. Anytime Walter's sitting there at the dinner table and just trying to have a regular conversation and Skylar just sitting there just making her bitchy face or being in her mood, blah blah blah, like that I have never despised the character more in my life. Like truly, you would think like like Skylar White and Joffrey are in the same room. Like, everybody hates Joffrey, I promise you. Skylar White is in that same room, and she might be a little bit above Joffrey. I'm not going to lie to you. Now, I'll say this, and this is a credit to the show's writing. At some point in this series, they actually had me on Skylar's side. 
not fully because like it was by the time like season by the time uh walter blew up Gu- blew up gus and blew up the hospital and stuff like that that was like season four into five so by the time we got into that like by then yes i could understand skylar's side and knowing that this was too far truly I, there should have been a part of me that probably should have noticed that earlier, but Skyler was just being such a bitch about everything. It was just like, ah, oh, all you're doing is nagging and whining and complaining and blah, 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 blah. And it's just like, you know what? I don't even want to look like I can't bring myself to even resonate with you because you're just so annoying. That's but but truly after Walt blew up that hospital and Skyler, you know, started to treat Walt differently. As far as, you know, saying, I want the kids out, I want, I, I need them away from you, all this other stuff. I understood where she was coming from because blowing up a hospital is Joker territory. Joker blew up a hospital. So if Walter White, if Walter doing shit like that, then yeah, you clearly going off the edge, brother. I can't, you can't come back from that. But Skylar White throughout the series was just somebody who was so annoying. Honestly, it's crazy. I can't, <laughs> Skylar White is annoying, but at the same time, it's like, I just know where her character was coming from and I and I can only imagine what it's like to be in a situation like that so I don't so I can't like put myself in her shoes but you know Anna Gunn killed that role I, it's crazy because I want to say who's more annoying her or Marie I'm not gonna lie Marie was kind of annoying as fuck but she was like funny her and Hank had this odd dynamic like at times honestly when Hank got shot I truly thought they were gonna divorce after that I, I didn't think they were gonna stay together much longer because they just seemed like they were just so sick of each other Marie like I didn't even understand how Hank and Marie like got together like I didn't understand like what they truly saw in each other but I mean, it is what it is. They, they, they were still a fairly decent couple. This show isn't really about the coupling, though. It's, it's more so about the characters themselves and the development of them. And like I said, each of these characters go through their own development stages that is just absolutely amazing. It, it truly is. I mean, Bob Odenkirk as Saul Goodman. I can't wait to start Better Call Saul. No, I haven't seen Better Call Saul either. There's no way I'd watch that without watching Breaking Bad first, but I am going to watch it, and I'll probably do a review on that too. I am excited to start that show. Bob Odenkirk as Saul Goodman was absolutely terrific. (sighs) I mean, guys, this show has so many different characters, so many different plot lines that you are just going to be hooked to, and truly, it's just something that I, I never thought that I'd ever experience in my life, like, as far as, like, this good of television, and I mean groundbreakingly intense TV, I mean, there are stuff, there are shots in this show, there are, like, the entire time, when, um, Walter comes home, I believe this is somewhere between season four, the the show is completely, like, jammed in my, crammed in my brain as one, the only thing I know for a fact that happened in season five is, like, the stuff towards the end, but it's when Walter comes home and you know he's trying to find the money in the basement or like that he buried under the house so he can get out of there because Gus wants to kill him and uh Skyler ends up telling him that you know she gave the money to Ted or whatever and he just goes because <laughs> goes crazy under the, like that 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 was some of the best acting I've ever seen in my life like and that scene was drawn out for about I want to say two and a half minutes and then the the camera shot panning on top zooming out of Walter still screaming like that screaming and squirming right there in that little hole I mean like I I truly don't know where they even got the idea to shoot stuff like this like where they even got the idea to have a camera shot like that an angle shot like that like it's like yo like these guys were so ahead of the TV game before like before all these other shows even came out. This is clearly why Breaking Bad did it first. I mean, I hope I can say that. I mean, I know it didn't do it before The Wire or Soprano. And I don't really remember when Breaking Bad came out, to be honest. I remember watching the commercials, but like I said, I wasn't really watching AMC, so that's that. But all the other characters in this show were absolutely spectacular. A guy that absolutely... I know, I'm saving Gus Fring. I know, I'm going to get to Gus Fring. But I, I, I want to talk about this guy for a second Jesse Plemons as Todd in the fifth season for Jesse Plemons to come into this show and absolutely leave his mark unlike any other character well I mean not not any other character but he left his mark unlike I'll say like any other sub character like Jesse Plemons showed up and I didn't know how intense of a role he would have or how big of a role he would have in this show but by the end of it Todd was a menace too. Todd, well, Todd been a menace. Todd, yeah, Todd, there was always something off about Todd. But Jesse Plemons, 
absolutely killed it as Todd. Like, I... Dude... I, I just can't say enough about these characters, man. Like, this this show truly has it all. Like, and on top of that, I am going to get to Gus Fring at some point. But on top of all that, not only having all the writing, it's ending. The ending to this show is absolutely perfection. If there's one thing I am hard on television shows about, especially great TV... If you want to be a great TV show, if you want to be one of the best, if you want to be known as, you know, the top of the top, you got your ending has to be as strong as your peak. And I promise you, the, se the se season five itself is absolutely just groundbreaking TV from start to finish. But the ending to this show is absolutely beautiful. I absolutely adored all of it. Like, I, it, it's something that feels complete. It comes full circle. It's whole. It doesn't leave any plot holes. I mean, I didn't watch the El Camino movie either. I'm going to watch that too. But this this show just brings everything full circle. It makes sure it closes out all its plot lines. It makes sure it doesn't leave anything out in the open. I mean, this show really takes care. It took its time and it made sure that they gave us a story that we could be satisfied with but one that could also sit with us for a while because this isn't something that's just going to leave us after the credits roll. After the credits roll, I, it literally took me a day to record this thing because I literally had to process everything I saw in this show. Like, I was absolutely astounded. And now that I can, you know, I've talked about the ending. Gus Fring, Juan, Juan, Juan Carlo Esposito, Los Poyos Hermanos, dude. You were something, you were acting your, yo, you were showing off in this show. Honestly, there were points of, there were times in this show where I truly felt like everybody at some point was just showing off. At, at some point, Walter was just, uh, Brian Cranston was showing off his acting range, Aaron Paul was showing off, Giancarlo Esposito was showing off, the writers were showing off, uh, Vince Galligan was showing off. Everybody in this damn show was just showing off at some point because they just knew they were too good. These guys knew that they were just creating the best thing ever fucking created. They knew that that, they, this, this TV show itself, like the blue that they sell in the show, that's what this show is. This show is meth. This show is completely addicted meth. Like you, like you are not going to be able to get enough of this show once you've started. And truly, when it ends, never have I felt so satisfied. I, I, I felt like a, a nice little satisfaction. Not even like a oh man, it's over. I was taking a while to finish this show because I wanted to savor it because I didn't want it just be over. But like when it was, I was stuck for a second because I was like, wow. I truly just finished one of the greatest TV shows in my lifetime. Like, truthfully. Like, I'm, I'm serious. Like, I'm sorry. Game of Thrones, you didn't do it better. Game of Thrones did not do it better. While Game of Thrones has so many eventful things that happen in the show, this show, this show has events as well. Ozymandias, everybody knows what that episode is. Ozymandias is one of the greatest TV sh episodes I've ever seen in my life. It's one of the greatest written TV TV show uh, TV episodes I've ever seen in my life. It's one of the greatest performed TV episodes I've ever seen in my life. Like Ozymandias is something serious. Ozymandias really took it out of me. And Ozymandias, if you don't know, well, if you've been listening to me this long and you don't know what Ozymandias is, I don't even know why you're still here. But uh, essentially, Ozymandias is Hank's death, and Hank's death. Yeah, that took that took it out of me for sure. Hank's death was so sad. Hank Schrader was easily one of the best cops I've ever seen in the TV show. I mean, this dude would give the entire Law and Order franchise. I'm talking about all 90 of them damn series. If Hank Schrader could take on the entire SVU franchise and outdo all them damn cops. Hank Schrader is one of the best cops I've ever seen in my life. Dean Norris really outdid himself in this series here. Like, I absolutely adored him. Who else is in this show, man? Who else do I want to talk about? Hector Salamanca. Look at me, Hector. Will you look at me now? Look at me, Hector. And that part cracks me up every time, yo. Like, dude, this show has so many memeable moments, so many memorable ones, so many intense scenes, so many just one-liners, so many quotable lines. This show truly was something to adore, to behold, to just hold up in a light. And this, this is truly something that I feel like cannot be recreated, can't be redone. I don't know if we'll ever see television this thoroughly written out 
back to back to back, like all of these seasons, like all of this intense, like the performances themselves. It's like shows, shows will have these things, but not to a consistent basis as far as Breaking Bad did, at least for me. Breaking Bad was a show where like, every episode somebody was delivering something new that just absolutely floored you or grounded you and they weren't just waiting for a finale or a cliffhanger or a mid-season finale like every episode did its best to give you something to mem to remember give you something to you know just stick with you for a while give you something to just you know have you stuck like, every, like, this show truly gave you everything that a TV series needs to give you. And I I can't praise it enough. I, this is truly a 10 out of 10, 5 out of 5. This is a perfect show for me, man. This is, Breaking Bad is a perfect show for me. And, and truly, like, there there have been some contenders. I, I Like, Game of Thrones, your ending is the only thing that's holding you outside of this, outside of this conversation. Peaky Block... If, Peaky Blinders, if Peaky Blinders, like, if Peaky Blinders didn't start so slow, and honestly, for some people, it may not start slow, but, because Breaking Bad didn't start slow for me, and people said it did, but Peaky Blinders, if it didn't have that slow start, it still has incredible performances, the show is absolutely spectacular, but if it wasn't for that slow start, Peaky Blinders would definitely be, but, be up there with this one, but Breaking Bad for me is one of one, it is the only show I've ever seen of its kind, it's the only show I've ever seen to truly just have a absolutely fantastic experience. Like, well, I mean, I've had fantastic experiences in numerous television shows, but as far as like this one goes, I mean, it, it's it, it's unthinkable, like truly. Like, I, I, it's truly hard to put into words just how amazing this show is. Cause like I said, people have tried. People tried to tell me how amazing this show was and they still undersold it to me. So I, I, I don't know if this is helping like, well, like I said, if you're still watching at this point, I don't know why, cause I've spoiled quite a bit by now, but truly this is just a show that completely just took me by storm. It, it completely just shocked me. It shook me to my core in so many different ways. It attached me to characters I didn't think I'd be attached to like Mike for the longest. I didn't think I'd have such a soft spot for Mike. Hank, Hank especially. Hank is my dog, bro. Like when Hank pat, like when Hank died, that hurt. Gomi, Gomi was Gomi was Hank's pal. I did enjoy Gomi, but he wasn't necessarily like too important to me. But nonetheless, everybody that showed up in this show, whether you were an actor, writer, producer, director, whatever your job, whatever your position was on this series, everybody showed up and showed the fuck out. Everyone came on this set to do their job and just absolutely blow blow us away with spectacular, groundbreaking television. And I absolutely loved every bit of this series. That is my review on Breaking Bad, guys. I Like I said... Uh, I, I keep trying to go back to if you haven't seen it, go watch it. But at this point, it was a full spoiler review. And if you're if spoilers don't bother you, either way, go watch the show. Because like I said, me talking about it is not going to be the same as you experiencing it. Like truly, like watching this show is revolutionary. It's something to really just be appreciative. And I really appreciate you guys for watching this and me rant about this amazing show. But look, thank you so much, so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Be sure to like, share, subscribe, all that stuff and so much more in the comment section below. Let's get a Breaking Bad conversation started. Breaking Bad only. Have not seen Better Call Saul or El Camino. No spoilers from those, please. But you can talk about Breaking Bad as much as you want. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Look, this is your guy in the chair. More content coming to you soon.